Adobe versus Resolve slash Blackmagic. Now it's no secret that Premiere Pro has been falling short for a lot of video creators lately. I cannot be the only one who is so tired of Premiere crashing at the worst possible time. Over the years, Premiere has gained a reputation as a program that is very prone to crashing. It's time to get into a node-based compositing workflow. Yeah. It looks like the time has officially come where I'm saying goodbye to the program that I've been using for almost 15 years of my life, and I honestly couldn't be happier about it. After Effects needs to be rewritten from the ground up, or I'm not using this fucking program anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody seems to be switching over to DaVinci Resolve. Why did I spend 10 years using Adobe Premiere Pro to then throw that all away and start using DaVinci Resolve? I'm actually switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. I want to talk to you about why I switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. I've officially switched over to DaVinci Resolve for all my video editing stuff. In my personal opinion, I think DaVinci Resolve is the best option out there for any kind of editor. DaVinci Resolve is so stable. It's so and good. It's so <laughs> smooth and it uses all of my GPU. You got the Fairlight for audio, you have Fusion for compositing, and it's all very capable. DaVinci over the years has been continuously making major improvements in all areas of the program. Look at the landscape. Look at how pricing for video editing software has changed. One of the most interesting things about DaVinci Resolve is that you can get a free version to start out with. And Blender's open source, mm -hmm. Unreal's free, and so is Resolve, Resolve's free. Adobe's like, Hey, you want access to our products? We'll pay us $52 a month. <laughs> Professional to me means I can rely on it for my business. Goodbye, Adobe. <sighs> I'm lying to you. This is a wireless mic. So I want to talk a little bit about DaVinci Resolve. There are a lot of really good videos out there talking about um, why people are switching or the reasons why maybe you should switch. And they all generally hit on the same notes. Uh, the price, free is great. A one-time one fee for a studio is also really nice. People talk about uh, stability and speed and uh, how nice it is to have so much of your complete video process all in one app. And I could make that video, I could even put my little spin on it. I think tons of people generally sleep on the Fusion page and ignore some of the really cool stuff you can do, especially with presets and templates. That's most of what I do on this channel. I've created uh, dozens of free presets for people working in Resolve um, all inside of the Fusion page. It's really cool. But I thought um, it would be more interesting, maybe a little more valuable to try to take a little step back and look at what's happening on a little bit more of a meta level and sort of talk about this interesting moment we seem to be in right now um, where lots of people are getting excited about DaVinci Resolve. But first, uh, a few big old disclaimers. I'm gonna do this, this is comfy, right? Number one, if you are happy with the software you are using, uh, whatever that is, great. <laughs> if you can make the kind of videos you wanna make in whatever, in Windows Paint, uh, Paint doesn't even exist anymore. If you are working in Premiere or Final Cut, or you know, Vegas, or Filmora, or mm, other ones, I don't know. <laughs> More power to you, that's great. May all your renders uh, uh, render. <laughs> Second disclaimer is just an, a little acknowledgement that I know um, some people, especially when they're excited about something, especially when they're excited about something um, and uh, hand in hand with that are uh, frustrated with something else, they can very easily go a little overboard. We're already seeing um, tons of people, uh, you know, when they ask for video editing help or when they talk about having issues with other editing software. Um, if that's in a public place, like on Twitter, um, they are gonna get swarmed um, probably with lots of people saying like, hey, DaVinci Resolve is free. And if people aren't actively looking for a suggestion, of course, that's gonna be really annoying. But, you know, uh, 2A, maybe, uh, I think it's okay to be a little bit of a fanboy. Obviously, it's very easy to take that overboard, um, but especially with a company like Blackmagic, which I might talk about um, a, in a bit more in a sec, a company that's like making moves and doing really interesting things like for the purpose of helping people be like creatively fulfilled. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's cool to be excited about that. But let's get back to it with a little bit um, of a story time. I started to learn to edit on Final Cut 7. That was a program at my high school. Um, I started messing around there um, quickly. They, they had a very early version of motion. I was messing around with that, uh, dipping my toes in motion graphics. Uh, but then, you know, went online, found Video Copilot, and was like, hey, 
After Effects is where I needed to be, so I convinced my teacher to buy a license of CS3 at the time, um, started working in Premiere and After Effects concurrently, and that's uh, where I was for, you know, a little over 10 years before I uh, slowly and then uh, much more um, immediately switched over to Resolve. But I want to make a, a specific note because during that time um, is when Final Cut 10, Final Cut X, I don't know if they ever actually settled on a name, um, first launched, and even though I, I didn't, like, move to that software, um, it was still sort of the default program, or Final Cut 7 was still the default program um, in that video program at my school. And even though, you know, I wasn't in like real professional circles, um, I sort of remember how that felt. There was, there was fallout from that launch. And I think Final Cut has absolutely um, earned, you know, whatever redemption arc they've got back. I know tons of people doing amazing work in Final Cut. Very, very cool. But at the time, like, I remember sort of just like this air around general editing stuff online of like, oh, this is, this is rough. Like lots of people were in Final Cut 7. They can't upgrade. They can't move forward. Um, what does this mean for Premiere Pro? What does this mean for like any of these other NLEs out there? And then in that like broader window is where we saw the move to uh, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. That subscription got up and running. And hey, it might be time for another side uh, already because this is such a good point to highlight how much the landscape has changed. I bought a personal student license for CS5, I believe. I bought it with a student discount and it was very, very expensive. So at the time of the launch of Creative Cloud, um, you can be as cynical as you want about it as a corporate move and, you know, freely be cynical about it as a corporate move. Uh, but uh, there's also a legitimate argument for that being a move towards accessibility. If you just wanted access for more than their one week trial, you could do just one or two months of a program. You still can if you don't get uh, looped in and all that. Uh, I know it's, it's rough. It's rough. It's rough with Adobe. <laughs> but still, if you're careful and know what you're doing, you can just sign up for a month or two. That is still very cool. But lots has changed since that point. Really, uh, Resolve. Outside of so much of the specifics of Resolve as a program, uh, all of Blackmagic design, like, sort of, sort of feels like a miracle a little bit. It's that, that's extreme. But if you've never looked into Blackmagic design as a company, it's very, very cool. I will link to one uh, article and video in the description of this video that the magazine uh, Forbes did uh, with the CEO of Blackmagic design. It's very, very cool, um, and it's, it's easy to get excited about. Blackmagic design has a clear vision. They have a course. They've never accepted outside funding. They're not public. They're not um, working to increase the wealth of shareholders. They're working to uh, make cool and good creative tools for people who want to do creative work. Their development just of Resolve over the last five years is, is pretty, pretty mind-blowing. And now they're doing things um, that no other software um, has done, like with Resolve on the iPad. It's just like the program, it's, it's stuff's going on in the iPad, but it's, it's very cool. <laughs> but it's so easy to be uh, optimistic about the future of Resolve. And I think that is a, a highly underrated selling point of why so many people are moving. Obviously, along with Fusion, everyone's sleeping on Fusion. We know that. <laughs> on the support page of DaVinci Resolve, you can download every past version of Resolve right now. And small steps like that make it pretty easy to have a little bit more confidence that Resolve, you know, won't just like lock down like crazy overnight. So now we're in this moment um, where tons of people are switching to Resolve um, and more and more high profile creators are as well. And so just a little while ago on the 14th of January of this year, um, I tweeted, who will be the next high profile creator to move to DaVinci Resolve? Uh, and in just a few days, uh, we got a tweet from iJustine that she's been diving in more um, and wants to explore that further. She even picked up uh, one of their really cool color panels. And then just a few days ago now, uh, Maddie Hapoya um, talked about downloading Resolve again and even followed up on that tweet, talking about the excitement of people um, in the replies to that about uh, more people working in Resolve. Here's, I think, the point I want to get to. It feels like we're at a little bit of an inflection point. Do I think the, the gates will burst and everyone will move to Resolve overnight and Premiere will be so dead in the water? No, not at all. You can look at Google Trends data and it looks like Premiere is doing fine. Uh, if anything, it looks like Resolve uh, might be steadily chipping away at the Final Cut Pro market share, but also that's Google Trends and not like, like data I would go 100% in on. And there are for sure so many uh, professionals and larger agencies and productions that are using Premiere um, and have everything down exactly the way um, they need it. Um, but I, I, I think you don't have to look too far into the future to see 
how some of that will start to be eroded, primarily through a uh, younger generation and new users. Resolve, Resolve is so interesting because it actively uh, pulls from like both ends of a market at once. You're getting brand new editors who have never edited anything else downloading Resolve for the first time because it's free. And then you have pros either moving completely from a different software or adding Resolve um, into like their, their sort of group of tools they're using. And interestingly, I think that dynamic um, will stay in play with Resolve on the iPad. Resolve on iPad will absolutely introduce a whole bunch of like brand new users or like mobile only users to Resolve. But also, I think there are some really cool use cases for Resolve on the iPad that will really only appeal to high-end or professional users. It's it's very interesting. <laughs> so right now, I think Resolve is in a really great spot. But if you look another five or 10 years in the future, where are we gonna be? Luckily, I think Resolve is a great place to get started even if you do end up moving somewhere else. If you learn how to edit on the edit page of Resolve and want to move somewhere that only uses Premiere, you can get up to speed with Premiere very quickly. But if there are enough people that are applying to those positions um, that are Resolve first editors, what does that mean for some of those agencies, some of those groups? I think that situation would happen um, if Resolve stayed exactly as is now, uh, but I don't think that's gonna happen. We're gonna see more development of Resolve. We're gonna see Resolve uh, push uh, really cool boundaries, including performance. I've got a lot of faith in them um, improving the Fusion performance, which would pay off for all the stuff I'm doing. And that's the kind of thing um, that, especially when compared uh, to how slow Adobe has seemed to do some like major needed overhauls, that from Resolve is very, very exciting. But since we're in this position now, um, it feels almost like an inevitability. Like you can ask, hey, who will be the next big name to move to Resolve? How long will it really be before we see a new batch of uh, indie filmmakers that either learned or are most comfortable on Resolve for the whole editing pipeline, not just color? Last side note, yes, uh, of course, lots of big videos uh, are, are colored in Resolve. That is very different from saying like, they are edited in Resolve, obviously. Side note, sub note, I super don't care whatever is an industry standard. <laughs> that term is thrown around so much, especially in conversations um, among people that have not or will never work in that industry, so it doesn't matter. What matters is knowing the tool so you can create what you wanna make. But I think it's pretty unavoidable that for more and more people, that tool will become DaVinci Resolve. So have you moved recently to working in DaVinci Resolve? Who uh, do you think uh, will be some of the next high profile uh, creators here on YouTube or elsewhere working in Resolve? And what gets you excited for the development of Resolve? Are you all in on the iPad? Do you just want more features across the board? If you want to move, but a few features are holding back, what are those? It's a very exciting time. It's fun to talk about. Uh, so that's that's what the comments will be for. <laughs> this is a different kind of a video from what I normally do with, with Fusion and presets and, and all of that. Uh, hey, I have dozens of free presets and plugins for Resolve if you want them. <laughs> but it's very fun to talk about this. Maybe I just don't have enough people to talk about this with. Uh, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.